All right, let's start with the nation. Sage Agbakuba Falano, interim government unknown to law. CCB begins probe of Kayamo's anti graft petition against Atiku. Public debt now 44 trillion naira, says DMO. Lagos government efforts to discredit some will lose victory will fail. PDP lifts suspension on Ayim and Fayoshi. APC US condemns anti Tinubu protest. UBA delivers 201 billion naira full year profit. And Lagos government ready for above normal rainfall emergencies. Yes, yeah, so I, I have the story. <laughs> yes. right. So the Lagos state government has told residents um, yesterday that, they will, that Lagos will be experiencing more rainfall, like it's predicted to be um, 1,936 um, mm. And they said it will be starting from the first week of April, which was why I said that prayer ahead that just give you one full month. Uh, Mr. Tuji Bello, who is the Commissioner for Environment and Water Resources, um, said that Lagos is ready, you know, and he mentioned that the prediction would not affect us. The um, meteorological NIMET gave the prediction that Ikeja is expecting a specific, they, they broke down everywhere that we'll be getting, and the Commissioner has listed that there will be contributory factor to the flood, including um, the rise of lagoon level, but he said the state has prepared and there will be relatively little um, flood-related issues by deploying the network of weather stations and river gauge stations to monitor everything around the state. So um, I'm just hoping that this first week it does not show up. Mm -hmm. I show up as just going to get to remake. That's why we need <laughs> miracle. We need miracle. Yes. I, mean, I need a miracle. Yes, this one is I cannot control. Contact a rainmakers, just pay them something. Hold it, they will hold it for me. Hold it for you. Yeah, those testimonies that not to do wedding, not to do rain, like hold it. Yes, it happened in my wedding. Yeah, you will need them to hold that rain. I do. So the major headline: Professor Itesage, Doctor Olisa Bakoba, Femi Falano, Ba Ukweni, Ahmed Raji, Chief Ajibola, Baba Tunde Fashano, Adekunle Oyesoya, and Emeka Itiaba, all senior advocates of Nigeria. Uh, you know, have said that the plot for an interim government is alien to the constitution and an aberration. They said um, no one must be allowed to scuttle the democracy. And, um, and they are urging that um, the uh, people who are aggrieved with the outcome of the presidential election should allow the judicial process to run its course. Uh, the DSS, on the other hand, have said that, um, that uh, this scheme is unacceptable in democracy and a lot more Nigerians are speaking up against it, saying that uh, I think the Plateau State Governor, uh, Simon Lalong, also said that those that are advocating for the interim uh, government are just daydreaming. This is not obtainable in a democratic situation. So different groups, different associations have spoken up about mm. it. The Labour uh, Party also said that they are not involved with any uh, planning for interim government, that whatever they have to do, they have to go through the court. Mm. So it's a very long article mm. in the nation. I think yeah. people should read up on it. All right. So the Lagos State Commissioner for Information and Strategy, uh, mm. Mr. Binga Omotosha, yesterday said that those who are planning to discredit the um, victory of Governor Babajide Sanwalu will fail. And he was saying that at um, the event where they received their certificates of return from INEC, um, he and the APC um, Tech Publicity Secretary, Mr. Cheye Oladejo, were speaking yesterday. And they stressed that the importance of someone lose second term, saying it was it had affirmed the values of inclusion and unity espoused by the governor. He further said that the governor will focus on people-oriented projects that can contribute to progress of the state. And the commissioner also lamented uh, about the poll results, which should be uh, sorry the, the misconception and the misinterpretation of the poll results, which according to him should be dispelled in this age of social media. And it says that uh, the election was democratic, transparent, free and fair, adding that overseers across a judge the exercise to be very credible. So let me take the story about um, APC, the U.S. chapter, which was um, the chairman of the APC U.S. chapter is Professor Tai Balofi, who was speaking concerning the fact that some people have gotten permission to protest against the presidential election and protest against the president-elect, um, Ashwa Jibola Metinobu, in Washington. He said that these are supporters of the candidates that lost the presidential election of 2023. He alleged, he was trying to 
ensure that people know that the U.S. government is neutral, that anybody can get permission to protest in America. And so it's not that the U.S. government is supporting protesters Protest. against the president-elect, but rather the U.S. government is allowing freedom of protest. He also mentioned that the, a lot of people have given the president-elect mandate, and so the protest is not necessary, and those that are doing it are, according to the media, saying they want to try and um, cause a rift okay. within... The, interim an interim government will now be called off to mm. see to what is going on and that the DSS is on the matter. But right. he's saying the U.S. government is not against the president-elect. They are just allowing freedom right. of freedom. protest. Add to that, uh, Peter Obi's spokesperson, Dr. Yunisa, has said that Peter Obi and Dati have nothing to do with this. He said we have raised fundamental issues about the process and the process is part of the democratic process. And he said that um, Obi is not in any way sponsoring anybody to do anything rather than urge everybody to be calm and follow the rule of law. So he's saying they're on their own, those that are protesting yeah. in the U.S. Okay, moving on to the punch. Are you, PDP nullifies, are you in suspension, san san sanctions, word, ESCO? Picture here again of Fred, um, Samuelu, <coughs> Makende, others get certificates of return from INEC. Mm -hmm. Whitney, Lagos, arranged Christian, principal, others for manslaughter. Muslim couples can get intimate after breaking fast, says cleric. Undo chapter tackles <coughs> Adebanjo over Afeniferi chieftains. OPS predicts wars as national debt hits 46 trillion naira and controversy surrounds Sylvia's <laughs> alleged resignation. Okay, which story are we taking in point? Our Bissil to the Debt Management <laughs> Office <laughs> on Thursday revealed that Nigeria's total public debt stock increased to 46.25 trillion or 103.11 billion in the fourth quarter of 2022. Uh, the latest figure uh, made members of the organized private sector and economists to predict tougher days ahead for Nigerians and businesses. So the national debt as of September 2022 was put at 44.0 trillion. And according to the office, new figure consists of the domestic and external total debt stocks of the federal government and subnational governments, that's the 36 state government and the federal capital territory. So we've been, it's been rising, the, um, all the details are here. However, uh, the Director Center for, of Promotion for Private Enterprise, Muda Yusuf, expressed concern about the multiplier effect of the latest debt. And he was saying that con this country will continue to struggle with servicing mm. of debt if drastic steps were not taken. So already we are paying about 80% of our revenue to service mm. debt. Mm. And now we are <laughs> still borrowing for um, uh, things that are not really yielding return. So if we mm. borrow to say, let's set up a refinery, we know that we can make money from that mm. and service the debt. But we're borrowing for things like infrastructure, infrastructure which is salaries. not giving us return, and we expect to pay with the federal government allocation. Mm. We we'll end up borrowing more to sustain. So he went ahead to give some advice, said okay. we have to cut down the cost of government, mm. among other things. Right. So. so an imam at the Federal University of Agriculture, Abdel Kuta, was saying, his name is Professor Sheri. Sharif Din Karim <laughs> has explained that Muslims mm -hmm. can have intercourse mm. during the month of Ramadan. All of ah, it, I didn't yes. know be acting as if this is month, holy month, don't touch mm. me, don't touch me. <laughs> he, said, he said that, according to him, Islam only allows legal married couples to have intercourse between Maghrib, that's the evening prayer, and Subui, that's the Salat to Subui, that's in the morning. Between that 7 p.m. and morning, you can this have... Can happen. He said that mm. Muslims can I copulate by suffer. the time... They've taken their iftar, after, that's after Solatu Mogrib. As soon as they eat, before they eat in the morning, they can also have their, uh, as they say, they are allowed <laughs> this to have one is flex, so. I like it. I like how Islam, like, Islam is uh, very, very descriptive. They will describe it for you. So you can't say, flex, you, flex, say flex, yeah. you know how Bible can be a bit uh, uh, shady. You know, everybody can interpret it. This one, they will tell you, this is how it is. <laughs> very interesting. Oh my God. Let, I I my to this story. Let me take this story. Anima um, doesn't this before. Anima <laughs> knows. Anima knows everything. <laughs> so, um, the Minister for States Petroleum um, Resources, Chief Timipri, um, Silva is alleged to have resigned um, because he wants to contest for governorship election within Bielsa State, which is going to, the primaries will take place April 14, but nobody has seen the resignation letter. And they are saying, they don't know if he has sent the resignation letter to the president, but according to the APC um, um, requirements, anybody that is already in a position should resign 30 days before the primaries, and primaries will be April 14. So, the conversation is, is likely he has resigned. Has he resigned? He has not resigned. I think it's important that um, the Minister for Petroleum, 
makes it known. Makes it known where he stands because yeah. it's obvious he wants to contest. He had been the governor of Bielsa State between 2008 and 2012. So he's entitled to one more term if they give it to him. And he he's hoping to have that happen for him within the next um, um, governorship election within Bielsa State. But I think that is important that he lets we know where he stands. And if they need to appoint someone else to be Minister for State in the interim, we before the handover, we need sorted. to know that sorted um, as well. So All this right. official is not necessary. Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing Sun, Daily Sun. Actually, let's move to Daily Sun. Interim government alleges ploy to arrest opposition, says Atiku. Nigerians in the U.S. secure permit to protest over February 25th election. APC petitions NBC over Mohammed's no president-elect comment. CCB invites Kiyamu over petition against Atiku. Uh, alleged manslaughter court <coughs> admits Christian staff to bail. Alleged vote by Supreme Court dismisses ex-ministers' suit against Tinubu and Atiku. Uh, First Bank announces name change of subsidiary. We did not issue seat at home in Lagos, says IPOP. Uh, yeah, okay. Which other story are you taking? Uh, IPOP saying they did not issue a seat at home. So they have disowned the purported seat at home order in Lagos State, saying that it's aimed at blackmailing their leader, Nam Kano. So the spokesman of the group, Ima Powerful, uh, asking Ibu who is residing in Lagos to ignore it completely and go about their business. He said, IPOP has never issued any seat at home order outside Biafra land. Anyone issuing seat at home order in Lagos is doing this at their own risk. It doesn't have anything to do with Namdi Kano or IPOB. And so they are disassociating themselves publicly from the ill purported seat at home in a, anywhere in Lagos and anywhere else in Nigeria. That if they have to issue a seat at home, they will be, make it public and then it can be observed. They will make it public and give you the reasons for the seat at home. And then any other part of the country that wants to join can now join. But right now, Everybody should disregard what they are saying about it in Lagos. So the um, All Progressive Congress presidential um, presidential campaign has asked that the NBC sanctions the <coughs> comments that was made by the vice presidential candidate of Liberal Party, um, um, Dati Baba Med. Uh, apparently in a channel's television program, he mentioned that the reason we don't have a president-elect <coughs> and citing section 1401 of the Nigerian Broadcast Code of the 6th edition, stating the duty of NBC to accept complaints and grievances, um, bodies or members of public investigate such actions as well. They have petitioned the NBC to um, sanction the program Politics Today, where during the interview, the guest um, impugned the integrity of the February 2023 election said that Labour Party won the election. According to them, it is a fallacy and not correct. And according to the court, a broadcaster is liable when his guest is allowed to make a wild statement and is, that is inaccurate and not based on fact. So they are asking that um, NBC looks into the situation and we'll wait to see how that goes. So let me take Chris Land. The Lagos State High Court yesterday admitted four members of Chris Land's school uh, the to the bill for alleged involuntary manslaughter of the 12-year-old Whitney. Um, the, those who were arraigned were staff members Ademoye, Adewale, Kuku Fatai, Belinda Amao, and Natsu Ogochi, Victoria. They were docked before Justice um, Uinda Mola Ogala of the State High Court in Lagos. And the defendants, however, pleaded not guilty to the charge after it was read to them. Uh, if you recall, she died, this young girl had died um, and an autopsy was performed which on February 15th, that should indeed, she was electrocuted, and Christian were, has been taken to court, and these four teachers have been arraigned, and will continue to monitor the, the, um, the proceedings of the court and hope that justice will be served eventually. Okay, moving on very quickly to Vanguard, <coughs> Nasima, others list risks to economy as debt hits 43.3 trillion. PDP reverses suspension of IEM, Fayoshi, and Shema. Student teachers injured as headsmen allegedly storm or your school. <clears throat> Nollywood actor Yule Doche loses 16-year-old son. Presidential poll. Obi disagrees with US APC over the White House Park protest. Lagos Array Christian School principal <clears throat> four staff others. And investment bill Ponzi scheme promoters risk 10 years jail term. All right. So I'll take the story of investments. 
I have to take her Ponzi to Surrey. Ponzi scheme. Ponzi scheme. So in, um, the, to protect the integrity of the um, Nigerian okay. Stock Exchange and proper official investment circles, there is a new law that has now been passed in um, 2023. It's called the Investment and Security Amendment Bill. And it, seeks, it will be given 10 years imprisonment to anyone who is found promoting Ponzi and pyramid schemes. These are schemes where they tell you, pay 10,000 Naira in, in a few days, you, you collect 20,000 Naira, they double the money for <coughs> you. Illegal investment scheme. Such people that promote it and own it will get 10 years imprisonment. Many Nigerians have lost money in this space. So the International um, Organization of Securities Commissions would be supervising this as well as um, enforcing it in the power of the Security Exchange Commission. So we are expecting that this would um, reduce the risk of Nigerians losing their hard-earned money to Ponzi pyramid schemes and at least they can see prosecution take place. Mm. So a suspected headsman allegedly invaded community grammar school at La Rukbonla in Uriri local government area of your state yesterday and injured students and teachers in the process. Uh, according to the story, they said um, about 20 alleged headers, you know, invaded the compound with their cattle and they were trying to graze while some of the teachers and students were trying to you know, drive them. But then uh, that was met with stiff um, um, resistance. resistance, yes, and the inflicted wounds. He said one Mr. Paul Olabode <coughs> had wounds on him. They used swords and machete. Uh, many others left with their broken hands and legs. So according to the story, again, they said that the school just finished their morning devotion that morning. Students were just preparing to uh, settle in for their examinations when they noticed that uh, cows had you know, walked into the compound grazing uh, on their crops, and then they came out to try and drive the headers and their cows away, but the resistance was strong. And, you know, they, um, according to the school principal, Mrs. Grace Alamu, said that she had heard on her way to work, she was called that something was happening in the school compound with the headers. And so she called the police. So she was very uh, confident that the police would come in to settle the matter. However, the police command in Oyo State debunked the alleged headsman mm. invasion, saying that... Um, there was nothing like that that happened. That what happened was the headsmen came and they were grazing outside the school compound. Mm. But people panicked and started running mm. helter-skelter. So far, so good. One of the uh, teachers whose name, the, she didn't want uh, her name to be mentioned, said that that was actually a lie, that people are, the police is now twisting the story. Or your government, on the other hand, have not said anything concerning okay. what has happened. Final paper, Nigerian Tribune, DMO, Nigeria's public debt rises to 42 the six trillion supreme court dismisses ex-minister mwajiba's suit seeking to disqualify tinubu and atiku pdp squashes suspension of shetima shayashi and Aim. interim government unconstitutional <coughs> whoever calls for it commits felony treason says agbakoba aliyu ayorindi and others labor party says we are not part of insurrection plans african leaders must take urgent steps to stem japa ties says and NURTW threatens showdown with Undo government over park managers. <clears throat> Let me start with the daughter of the sage ambassador, Dr. Olatokumbo Awilawo um, Odosumu. She had tasked African leaders to urgently take steps to stem the tide of too many Africans uh, emigrating to countries where their skills are better appreciated, a trend popularly known as Japa. Uh, she said that call has become more expedient as more Africans are losing mostly their youths to this immigration and, 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 they, and these, are children, these are youths who possess critical skills um, that, are, that the continent needs for development and to take its rightful place in the world. I mean, that, that's, a, that's, that, that's, um, that, that's, that, that's something that is worthy of highlighting. However, I've always stated <laughs> that we shouldn't worry about those who are leaving. We should worry about making sure they come back, creating mm -hmm. an environment, environment that will make them want to come home. So you can't force anybody to leave. But instead of government focusing on don't go, focus on I've, I've let the them leave the bed. Yeah, come now, they they will themselves decide, skills, and they'll come back yeah, and they come back yeah. home because we actually need their skills back home. Okay, any other story in tribunal? Let's that's yeah, all we can Supreme, take. Oh, Supreme Court story. has um, dismissed the case that was brought up by the former minister of state for education, Chukwemeka Mwajuiba. Um, he was seeking to disqualify the president-elect Ashwajibola Metinubu and 
the presidential candidates for PDP, Atiku Abubakar, that both of them should not have qualified from their, in, their party, political parties in the first place. Well, the Justice John Okoro, that presided over a five-member panel, has dismissed the appeal, um, did not award any cost to the former minister for withdrawing his case, and um, said that it was something that should have been dis dealt with by a lower court. So. Okay, this day, let me just take a final story. This day, um, Donald Trump, <laughs> indicted by Manhattan Grand Jury, may face over 30 counts of business-related fraud. So, mm -hmm. um, he was indicted by the Manhattan Grand Jury, according to um, multiple sources familiar with the matter. And But I trust Donald Trump. Bah, 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 he has responded. <laughs> he will respond. <laughs> he was claiming it was a political persecution and uh, mm -hmm. election interference at the highest level in history. The former president faces more than 30 counts related to business fraud, uh, indict uh, business fraud indictment, according to two sources familiar with the case, and the indictment has been filed under the seal and will be announced in the coming days. The charges are not publicly known at this time. But Donald Trump is in some serious soup right now. Mm -hmm. and that is we get all we can take on front page. But it's interesting how certain countries are willing to defend their democracy. You mm -hmm. know, it's like you, one person cannot take, bring down the system. You mm -hmm. know, the system itself will fight it. It's quite interesting. Because they have built the system.